Welcome back to the channel. We are back out here for another freaking episode of buying some tratters with the Tratter Taxi. Today we stopped off at a Mahindra dealer over in Pasco County and we've got a Mahindra 4500 loaded up that we have bought from them and we've got to pick up a Kubota 3130, a little TYM Tratter and another New Holland today. So first stop, we've got our Mahindra right here picked up and we've got two more stops to make. So let's get this thing chained down and we'll be hitting the road to go pick up some more Tratters. All right, so we got all of our tractors picked up that we we're picking up for the day. Um, decided to stop at the chrome shop on the way home because we got our trailer pretty straightened out. I was waiting to buy some lights for it until we got all the bugs worked out, but she's pretty worked out. So I just snapped some photos of the lights we're gonna be replacing and see what we got inside to get the, put on this bird. All right, got me a Pepsi. Now I need to find some lights. First thing I know we need is on the back of the trailer here, we've got four reds and two ambers. So we need six total of the Grand General stainless rings. Gotta find those. Excuse me. Those are plastic. There we go. Five, six. Okay, let's start making a pile.
Alright guys, we're meeting this fella here, we bought a, yeah, we we bought a tractor. No, you're good. I'll help you. I guess we can pull it out by hand. Yeah. Yeah. You want to you grab, grab like here? Oh, look at that. Yeah, we sell quite a few of these things. I got a call from this fellow this morning. He's seen on our website that we buy equipment. He Googled a place to sell his tractor, and I thought at first he was maybe a fan. We do a lot of you guys trying to sell us equipment, we do buy some of it. And uh, anyways, turns out he's not a fan. He just found us on Google, but we buy his new Holland tractor. We drove about two hours and met him halfway down here at Yeehaw Junction in South Florida. So, done a lot of tractor in the past couple days. A 2021 2021 New Holland Workmaster 25. At least he's driving a Cummins. Have it guys we don't have our mics on us so our sound's not as good as usual but uh we ran up here snagged this new holland workmaster 25 quick attached bucket got some rake and a and a uh grader blade and stuff like that so not a bad little deal we're putting our diamond seat trailer to the test so let's head back home and uh tomorrow morning we're gonna be heading down south once again to deliver a big giant case wheel loader we bought about a month and a half ago so let's roll all right, folks, so this morning we are headed out to go deliver this case 621D uh, wheel loader with the great brake, forks, and a bucket down to Fort Meade, Florida. So had Nick loaded up yesterday, and he chained everything down, so we're going to do a little walk down the trailer and make sure everything's good to go. All right, so first things first, we got the bucket on here. We got two straps on here, and those things are freaking taut, not going nowhere. We've got a root rake on here, also four-inch straps on that. A lot of you don't like snap binders, but I love them. We've got uh, four snap binders on it. So we got two chains, but a total of four binders at each corner. So this baby ain't going freaking nowhere. I think we're all set. We'll go air the trailer up. Now the truck started up and uh, we're gonna hit the road, head down to Fort Meade. All right, let's freaking go. These brakes all trailer aired up. What the heck? Well, folks, it looks like we've got some check engine lights. That's not good. I don't know what it means, though. So if you look right here, close that door. So if we look right here, I think there's a way for this thing to tell us, like, engine check engine light, exhaust system, a way to like tell me which one of these things is messed up. Just what I needed to see here. Not good. Not good at all. I know there's a way to like do a systems check. I don't remember how. Oh, here we go. Over here. That's right. There we go. Here I was thinking that whole EPA thing that went down, we might be able to uh, delete this bird, but I don't know. The 
this thing is doing a full check by itself. I don't think there's any way to like read codes. I don't know. No critical issues, so two non-critical. Well, I think that may be okay for us to go ahead and hit the road and get this thing delivered. So we'll just monitor it and make sure there's no critical problems coming up and uh, hope for the best. Well, now we got a check engine light. We're coolant fault. So I guess we're gonna get out and check the coolant. All right, hopefully this ain't nothing major. Let's check this coolant bottle. Looks like it's got coolant in it. I don't know, maybe it is a little low. I don't know where we fill it up at. Well, isn't this just great? Guess I'll run over to Napa where I couldn't get some before we leave. Yeah, right there, it says low right there. So, I guess I'll run to Napa and get some and fill it up. Be right back. All right, boys and girls, so right here I come back and uh, don't currently know that my mic is not working, so I'm probably saying something along the lines of, yeah, we're going to open the lid on this here jug and uh, go ahead and pour it all in this here Peterbilt overflow tube uh, tank. <laughs> tank here, and let's hope I don't spill it. Oh, and here I am thinking, man, this coolant does not look as dark red as the red stuff that I'm, that's already in here, so... Ah, let's keep filling this thing up. Dang, I feel like this thing has taken a lot more than I would have ever imagined. Holy crap, this thing is really, really freaking low. Yep, we just keep filming and filming and filming and wasting y'all's time. And the uh, engine's just sitting here running. And you just hear the Cummins running and running and running. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> we're st oh, there we go. And here I am saying, dang, this thing took a lot of coolant. Oh, let's put a little bit more and just on. Oh, it's on my hand. I'll, pr I'll probably taste this later. I'm like, yeah, does this taste like coolant? Yep. It tastes like freaking coolant. So, yeah, we're filling it up some more and more. And uh, almost full, almost full, almost full. Yep, there we go. I think I'll, yep, I'll put the cap on to make sure I cross thread them threads really good. Yep, all cross threaded. Me blabbing some more about how. This thing was low on coolant, and it probably was because of the uh, the uh, APU or something like that. But oh, let's climb back in here, confirm the uh, coolant light went off. Now I'm probably telling Ryan, hey, make sure the camera's on your film and make sure the mics are good. And got my mic on there, but it's not good, so you can't hear anything I'm saying, which kind of sucks. But it is what it is. Press the air brake in. Psh! Air brakes pressed. <laughs> air brakes are released. And uh, we're going to grind this gear just a little bit because my clutch brake needs to be adjusted. Nope, and here we go. Thank you. Right, so we just had to stop on the side of the road once again. Our check-in lights are still on. But the low coolant light just started flashing again. You guys just see we filled it up, and I didn't bring any with me like a dummy. So we're going to hop out of this thing and check the coolant again and see what's going on. Uh, we're on the side of the road here. Let's hop out and check it out. Buy a brand new long nose Peterbilt, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Thing slap full. Oh, well, no, that's water leaking from the AC. Uh, I don't know. The only thing I can think of is when we put the APU on it, maybe it's still like burping water. I'm not sure. 
Fans working, everything's spinning. Oil's good. I don't know. So close her back up, keep driving, and see what it does. All right, let's get back on the highway here. No traffic in our rear view. And uh, see if we can make it to our final destination. We're only about 20 miles out from dropping this loader off. And uh, we'll be headed back, and then I'm gonna try to get over to like Peterbilt, Tampa. See if we can figure out what these check engine lines are. Hopefully, we can get that thing figured out. Because we're not gonna be going back up to Tennessee to the semi casual guys for like another month. So, kind of the position we're in right now. All right, folks, we are pulling up. I don't see any trains coming. So there's a big gate next to the power plant. You're going to hang a left there. Yeah, right there it is, big metal gate. I think we're going to unload this baby out here in the road because... I don't want to pull up in there. All right. So he says well, there's plenty of room to turn around in here. We'll take his word for it. We're going to find out. All these orange trees are about to be pushed out by this big wheel loader here because they uh, have got a disease called greening. So they're going to push them all out and repurpose the field or replant new ones that are genetically different so they don't get these diseases. And yeah, that's kind of why there's no like orange produce companies here in Florida anymore. All those diseases in the trees. You know palm trees are not native to Florida? Really? Yeah, <laughs> I learned that like a month ago. So when you see like palm trees out in the middle of the field, like out of nowhere, it's because a bird ate the seed and dropped it, dropped it off somewhere else. Well, I guess this is where we must be talking about. What are you under on YouTube? Bruce Wilson. Okay.
All right, guys, we stopped over here at Paul's house. We made it back, obviously. No breakdowns in the Peterbilt. Um, we're grabbing a skid steer. We're gonna be leveling out our RC track out back. We don't really use it anymore. My brother just, I know, just doesn't want to do it anymore as far as the track goes. So we're going to uh, borrow a skid steer from Paul and we're going to level that out. And then on the way back, we've got to pick up a trailer that doesn't run. So we're gonna use the skid steer to drag it up on the trailer. Let me go find uh, our skid steer. Well, Paul has been nice enough to loan us one of the uh, new machines he's got for sale, not just a rental. So he's gonna go get a bucket and then we're gonna load it up. Yeah, I'm just wheels only. It's a 14 ply tires on it. Yeah, I do too. Fucking hell. Alright, so Paul loaned us this, I don't know what year it is, at Kubota SVL 75, so 2019, and it's for sale at <laughs> buyaskidsteer.com. So anyways, he loaned this this baby. We're going to run right down the road and grab that tractor we got to work on and get back to the shop. All right, guys, I made it back to the shop. I'm looking hella, hella, hella ugly with my little beard. I can, I know you guys comment and saying it, it's true. Um, we ended up not picking up that tractor. It ended up being something really simple and easy. We fixed it up. So we got back, we got the truck unloaded. We've got a sprayer on the back of the Peterbilt over there. We're gonna be delivering me, my father, I'm sorry, my father, myself, and Ryan are gonna be going up to Alabama to the hunting camp this weekend. So get some hunting camp footage. Got more tractors to pick up. That little new home we picked up last night, looking fresh. The Kubota we picked up early in the video, looking fresh, ready to be sold. Our Willistar t-shirts are freaking sick. We've got some of them shipped out, or I'm packing up some more tonight. Uh, it's currently Wednesday. This video will probably go up on Thursday. So hope you all enjoyed the video. Make sure you smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe. Go to BruceWilsonShop.com, cap your merch. And uh, yeah, let's uh, hope this beard grows back.